the midst of the economic downturn in the country, uh, those who have been asking the question, what is the role or the roles of the governors in the different states of the Federation? There are 36 of them. And perhaps if the Federation units are coming up to speed with their duties, maybe things will be reduced. And we have seen some activities of some of the governors that one can uh, put finger on. Today, we saw the governor of uh, Oyo State, Governor Sheyi Makine, who flagged off uh, the road uh, infrastructure project of the circular road that is going to be about 32.2 kilometer in Oyo State. That road infrastructure component of the 110 kilometer project, named after a former governor, Rashid Ladoja, will complete the first phase of the important project started by the Governor Mackenday's government after previous administration and more the idea for to no avail the 32.2 kilometer southeast wing of the four section project comprises six bridges and two interchanges uh, which have all been completed since 2023 and in the flag off the governor was talking about the economic importance of this project to the people of Oyo State, which brings us to why we are on this conversation tonight. The people of the interior and the rural areas in the country must feel the presence of government and in direct connection to their lives and livelihood is what impact are these projects going to make on the pocket, on the monies in their pocket and the food on their table, especially when the prices of commodities are getting out of the roof. Let's speak with uh, the governor of Oyo State, Governor Sheyi Makinde, who joins us now from Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. Thank you well, so much, you Governor so much. Makinde, for joining us tonight. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. There are those who will say, um, yes, infrastructure is important, but one thing that is also very, very important is the stomach infrastructure. When there is a collapse of the stomach infrastructure, road infrastructure is almost <laughs> no-brainer because uh, at the end of the day, yeah, the infrastructure that you can see physically, it is the stomach infrastructure that will help. And we have seen some governors and politicians who have paid attention to stomach infrastructure. But give us an understanding why this very project is important to the people of Oyo State. Well, thank you, uh, Sean, for, uh, for having me. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, loud and uh, clear. Please, go ahead. Okay, yes. Well, uh, you have uh, to deal with uh, uh, immediate issues uh, of hunger, uh, uh, hunger in the land. But while doing that, you also... Uh, We'll have to do deal with uh, medium uh, to uh, long term issues, uh, which uh, 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 are the main infrastructure that will ensure that you're productive, and uh, that is exactly what we're doing in uh, your state. Uh, we didn't only flag off the 32 kilometer. Uh, uh, southeast uh, wing of the circular road. We also uh, commissioned uh, some junction improvement uh, uh, projects, uh, uh, which, though some people may say, oh, this is uh, 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 a small project. In terms of how much you've spent, it's not uh, uh, a small project, but also in terms of its impact, because time is, uh, uh, time is money. Um, uh, with the junction improvement work that we've done, we've been able to uh, first uh, uh, shorten the uh, time that you need to commute, especially through a busy place like Agodi Gate in uh, uh, Ibadan. Uh, but also, we were thinking of you know how to deal with uh, people that are selling on the side of the. Uh, on the side of the road, uh, one for their own uh, safety. If there's a brake failure, you know, uh, people get crushed. A uh, few uh, weeks ago, we had a, 
a gas uh, uh, tanker, you know, that uh, overturned right on the road. And I just kept thinking to myself, what if uh, this had uh, resulted into a conflagration? And uh, uh, in the middle, uh, you know, of uh, where people are selling. So we're looking at how to take these people off the uh, street uh, so that uh, uh, you can have a free flow of traffic. And in a few, uh, uh, in a few uh, weeks from now, about middle of uh, April, we're holding a local and international uh, uh, tourism investors, you know, in your state. And people don't want to come to your environment and see uh, your dirtiness. They don't want to come in and see, uh, you know, how uh, you're not able to move from one place to the other because of uh, uh, traffic uh, bottleneck. Uh, they don't want to come in and see, you know, uh, that uh, 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 all your people are thinking is just uh, uh, something uh, for the short term. So there's a connection between uh, dealing with the immediate uh, uh, issues of uh, uh, hunger in the land and dealing with the long-term a uh, medium to long term issue of uh, providing infrastructure expanding your uh, expanding our economy and ensuring that uh, 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 you are on a trajectory you know where what you are doing can be sustained mm -hmm. over a long All period right. of time yeah so i mean governor uh, uh, the sokpor me syndrome in the, is a very popular one and for those who perhaps don't understand is that Ibadan drivers, especially those who drive those taxis, uh, colored green taxis in Ibadan, are very used to uh, uh, flagging down with their hands, asking those who are the other commuters if they didn't see their hands when they're flagging. And so, Sokpor or Miss Syndrome is very, very a lot popular in Ibadan. And to tell the story of how tedious and how chaotic traffic situation could be in the city of Ibadan, uh, Bere, uh, Iwo Road, Challenge, and the rest, a nightmare is driving through those areas. And when you open up the areas, New Bodija and the rest, but these other areas that you have opened up, the Idea Pacific Center and Agudi Gate Axis, uh, it brings a whole lot of ease in the traffic situation. But it's going to be a lot of shock also to traders who are used to uh, not paying money for the stores uh, on the roadside. Uh, and the economy, the little economy is going to be impacted. These are the little and the small scale businesses. What is the plan to alleviate their pains? Because you will, uh, you will have to uh, take them out of their natural habitat. They are, they are, they've used to it. Uh, thank you, Shane Foster. Let me uh, explain a little bit uh, our own uh, uh, concept of uh, development. Uh, your state is a fairly uh, large state. We're over 28,000 square kilometers. And uh, we have uh, five major zones. You have Ibadan, you have Oyo, you have Obomasha, you have Okiogun, and also Ibarapa uh, 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 zone. So when we came in in uh, 2019, we started by saying, look, all our zones must be interconnected. So we uh, fixed the roads uh, between Oyo, between Ibadan zone, and Okyogun zone, Okyogun being the food basket of the states for ease of transportation of uh, 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 food uh, uh, produce, you know, between where it is being produced and uh, Ibadan is where is the population center. So that road, if I remember correctly, was commissioned by the former governor of uh, uh, Benue uh, uh, State. Um, then we approached the federal government because between Oyo and Okyogun zone also, it's, uh, we, we had a federal road, which eventually they gave us the uh, approval to reconstruct. And we reconstructed that uh, road between Oyo. So Oyo is also now linked to the food basket of the uh, state, Okyogun zone. Now, we went to Obomasha. No road uh, 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 was in existence when we came in between Obomasha and Okyogun zone. And that road now is uh, 
maybe uh, uh, almost uh, 90, 92 percent uh, uh, done, and we are going to be uh, commissioning it uh, as part of our uh, uh, first year anniversary of our second tender, which is end of May uh, this year. With that, we've been able to link four major zones. Now the Ibarapa zone, we have uh, linked Ibarapa to Kyogo, but not in, this, in, in the specific way that I would love it to see. We have linked Ibora, you know, all the way to Igana, Igaga, to Igana. So those are full uh, 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 belts for the state. And we're working right now on also linking Ibarapa to uh, Ibada through uh, Ido in Ibada. So that has been our concept. Now, having been able to get all of this together, uh, uh, to get in a situation where people can live in Isai and work in Ibada, it's only 45, 50 minutes uh, now. People are going from Oyo to Isai, they are going from Ubumasho through Isai, you know, to uh, other Okyogo uh, uh, towns and cities. In Ibada itself, being the state uh, uh, capital, we also uh, just uh, started uh, fixing all the roads, you know, the inner roads uh, within Ibada. People were criticizing us uh, initially that, uh, oh, uh, we're, we're linking up uh, the major zones of the state. How about the inner roads? Now we've started with the inner roads and the connectivity, you know, uh, that we're trying to create both uh, intra and inter uh, city, you know, uh, in uh, our cities, what we hope will drive uh, uh, our economic uh, growth. And just what you said about uh, Shoko Rawambi, which is uh, the behavior of uh, taxi drivers in uh, uh, Ibadan before now. Let me say this I challenge you, she will come to Ibadan and I will take you around. Um, our taxi drivers now, they obey uh, uh, traffic uh, lights. They queue, even the Okada drivers, uh, uh, Okada riders, when they said to me that, uh, oh, you need to ban uh, Okada uh, riders, I said, no, I will not ban Okada riders in Nigeria, in Oyoste, uh, because if they are filling a gap, then we need them. So if I'm not uh, banning them, I will control them. I will know who they are. At least 80% of uh, Okada, right, uh, Okada that are plying the streets of uh, Oyo State today, they are painted specially. They are painted like uh, the taxis in uh, 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 Oyo State. So you know when you see them that this is an Okada that is being used for commercial at land. We've registered over 50,000 of them, and the registration is still continuing. So, uh, if you come to Ibada now, uh, Shil, uh, things are pretty much very organized. Mm. Very, mean, very I, I'm, organized. I'm looking, and we, I'm, we, I'm looking, we I'm, expect to. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that we, we, and uh, hoping that uh, no green taxi drivers will tell me, talk more or on me, but then. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you see the roads there. But I mean, the, the interesting thing is this. Uh, the o o Ogun State, the southwest axis, coming to a so a more, a more deep south of southwest, are uh, talking about Lagos, Ogun, and Oyo State. It's, there seems to be some kind of competition between those three states. In the, uh, which one has the highest industrial zone? If you ask Governor Dakwabiodun, he will tell you that he is the mother of in the, in industrialization in Nigeria. If you ask uh, Governor Samuolu, he will tell you that he is home to the major industries in Nigeria. But in the recent years, we've seen almost 30 billion worth of agribusiness investment in Oyo State. Well, tell us, Governor uh, McKinney, tonight, what would you like or your state to be known for? And how much have you attracted to the benefit of the Oyo state people in terms of industrialization and attraction of private investors? Okay, well, uh, let me say this. Uh, you know, just before I came uh, uh, on this program, I was watching you, and then you were talking about... Uh, what the president said about you know uh, patronizing made in Nigeria uh, uh, 
uh, goods, you know, products and uh, uh, services. Well, let me let, let me be clear. Uh, for us in Ohio State, yes, we look at import substitution and we think, well, you know, import substitution is good. And remember that in Ohio State we have uh, the only plant that converts cassava to sorbitol. I commissioned that plant uh, in uh, uh, Ado Hawaii, and we have uh, a whole new ecosystem being uh, uh, created in there. And I asked the uh, lady, so can't we look at this for uh, export? And she said, well, we're not even able to meet the demand, the local demand for sorbitol. And by, by the way, sorbitol, you use it... Uh, uh, by your toothpaste, you know, and few uh, pharmaceutical uh, products like that. We're not excited uh, so much about uh, import substitution. Yes, it's good to be able to feed ourselves, but what will create wealth for us and even for the country is when you export. When you export, when your market, you know, is not limited to your uh, uh, little market in your country when you are selling to the rest of the world. So suddenly, instead of uh, talking about uh, selling to 190 or 200 million people, you are thinking in terms of uh, selling to 1 billion people. And the mindset is uh, totally different when you are going in that direction because your quality will have to be right and your engagement is not only looking at uh, your local environment, you're also looking at uh, what exactly does the world need. So coming home to Oyo State in particular, when we put in our money to fix the road between Oyo and Isai, we knew that road was going to pass through uh, Fashala, which is a, a major agribusiness hub for us. It, we're not just talking about uh, 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 agribusiness, you know, to feed ourselves. We're talking about major industries, uh, uh, agro-processing uh, industries coming in there to be able to sell to the uh, rest of the world. So uh, for us uh, uh, in our states, uh, we are looking beyond just uh, uh, feeding ourselves. And if you go back uh, in time, uh, when we talk about... Uh, uh, cocoa, granite, palm oil, they were not selling to Nigeria at that time. They were selling to the rest of the world, and the proceeds uh, were being used, you know, uh, to uh, bring in uh, forex and also uh, for development uh, within uh, 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 our regions at that time. And that is uh, our focus. So, in so Governor Makine, uh, how do we create wealth? Yeah. So what can you tell us? Um, because we know, uh, and some of uh, the output or some of the, uh, what we can tangibly uh, lay claims to uh, in the second uh, republic uh, industrial kind of revolution is the Cocoa House, which stands in the, in the center of Ibadan, uh, where you can say the Southwest government, uh, the government in the South uh, are coming together in, uh, in some of the investment that we have seen uh, what do you think, what produce do you think or your state can give to the rest of the world in the, in the next two years? What would your state be known well, for? Your state happens to be uh, one of the states selected for special agro-processing uh, zone. And we're being supported by uh, the uh, African Development uh, uh, Bank. First, uh, uh, I know this... Uh, uh, as always, uh, cost issues between me and the uh, uh, governor, Dr. Abiyadu. Uh, your state is the largest producer of cassava in Nigeria. And we have the data to justify it. So uh, we have uh, cassava. Um, uh, now we have uh, cassava to sorbitol factory, cassava to starch. And uh, uh, we're also looking at cassava to ethanol. Now, if you uh, move uh, forward, we also think our uh, state uh, should excel. And we are increasing how much land we're cultivating uh, uh, for soybeans. So for soybeans, 
we think Ohio State is uh, uh, well geared, uh, you know, to also, uh, you have soy meat, you have uh, things that uh, we can process uh, 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 soybeans uh, into, you know, coming from Ohio State. And lastly, uh, we are the biggest producer of uh, animal feeds, you know, uh, in Ohio State. All the uh, 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 the inputs came from uh, uh, Kenya. We have a Fresland campaigner in uh, Fashola right now. They told me in terms of uh, the gestation period, uh, the proof of concept, when they brought uh, uh, those uh, seeds to uh, uh, Fashola, something that normally will take about five years, you know, in other places uh, around the, uh, uh, the world, especially in East Africa, it has taken out uh, only one year you know, to start uh, producing their uh, aids to feed uh, uh, our cattle. And it will surprise you that a bag of aids to feed the cattle is actually more expensive than a bag of rice. So for us, those are three things. Of course, we have a secondary um, um, uh, produce that we're looking at, like tomatoes. Uh, of course, cashew uh, is doing well in our yard. We have the plantation that are being regenerated. And a lot of people are still coming to Ohio State to, uh, you know, take uh, their, their cashew. I have a company in uh, the uh, local government that is processing cashew juice into a uh, spirit, you know, a uh, 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 drinkable one. And we're encouraging the, uh, uh, the company to expand and they are exporting also. But the message to uh, the people of uh, your state and to Nigerians is that uh, for us, our salvation is not only in import substitution, is not only in producing to feed ourselves, but in taking on uh, the markets that are All available right. around the world. Governor Markine, we are due for a break, but uh, quickly, even 30 seconds, you can quickly tell us. Uh, to the benefit, all of these things that you have listed, it, it will amount to one thing. What benefit has it been for the people of Oyo State in terms of the numbers? Uh, thank God you are an engineer, so mathematics is your very good friend. In terms of the indices, in terms of IGR, uh, increase in IGR, in terms of the GDP, in terms of uh, the betterment in the livelihoods of the people of Oyo State, can you give us maybe three of the figures of the indices that has changed since some of these uh, projects and development that you have mentioned? Well, when I came in uh, 2019, uh, so IGR for your state was uh, a little uh, short uh, of about 1.8 billion uh, uh, naira uh, monthly. Uh, but now we are almost, we've doubled that. In fact, more than double. We're around 3.8 to 4 billion uh, 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 naira uh, monthly. But it is still very insignificant. When you compare to 120 kilometers down the road, Lagos State, they are uh, making about 60, 65 billion on a monthly basis in IGR. So I want a situation where Ohio State IGR will, uh, 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 before the expiration of uh, our second tenor, will get to something somewhere between 10 and 15 billion naira uh, every month. So. And we've been able to achieve this without raising taxes on the people. It's just by but you've borrowed. expanding our... But you've program. borrowed a little, right? You've borrowed. Well, uh, you see, when, when people say you borrow, but can you just go to the bank and say, look, give me money uh, uh, to do certain things without having the capacity to uh, pay back? And when you talk about even borrowing, just before I came in, $200 million uh, uh, was borrowed by the previous administration, and uh, uh, it was added over to us. But in terms of uh, real money right now, uh, it was uh, at that time about $80 billion. But now it's uh, uh, over $320 billion because of the depreciation of the Naira. So, you know, the dynamics of uh, All right. uh, how you manage your, your economy, you can't say, oh, don't uh, uh, borrow. No, you should not overstretch 
uh, yourself. And if you borrow, you must have the means to pay back. All right, we're due for a break, Governor Makine. But I have just two questions for you before the end of the program. Uh, and uh, I know you got upset when uh, the Senate President Goswe Akpabio uh, now, now erroneously said that uh, the, the governors are collecting 30 billion and there's nothing to show for it. You responded. I want to know how much, there's about over 20% in the increase in federal allocation going to the state since Bolatinobu government came into force. And also, the security memoranda uh, on state police, did Oyo State submit? If you did, what is your perspective on that? Those two questions after this break, everyone. We'll be right back. Uh, we've been speaking with Governor Shayi Makine, our closing moments with him now. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time tonight. Uh, but something got you upset recently when the Senate President, Gazwe Akpabio, uh, said uh, the governors are collecting billions of naira. But, uh, well, asking, uh, basically, what have you to show for it? The figures are showing that in the uh, final months of last year and in the early months of this year, the states have had increase in federal allocation, which means that there should be more money for the state to spend. The citizen in the state should benefit more. For you and your colleagues, the question is, what have you done with the money? <laughs> so, um, I really want to put uh, you know, uh, that uh, behind us because uh, the Senate president has uh, also come out, made his own uh, statement. The, the bottom line, really, is... Uh, uh, in an ideal situ situation, we all should not be going to Abuja cap in hand, begging for money. So talking about, uh, uh, you know, FAC allocation and all of that, uh, we are not addressing uh, uh, the real uh, issues in front of us. Uh, this... Should create their own wealth, survive uh, uh, on their own. Article uh, setting under America. Have you heard of uh, you know set of things to beg for uh, money? So I don't want us to get this. will not take any state out of poverty. As of this particular uh, month, for instance, this is the figure that came out yesterday. Our oh, state uh, got 9.3 billion, 9.3 billion uh, uh, as the state allocation from uh, uh, the federation account. And the salary for the month and the wage award um, is uh, about 8.6 billion. The salary itself is, a, is about 7.3, and the wage award is 1.3. So we're left with uh, about 600 million uh, naira at the end of uh, this uh, FAC allocation. Is that what will uh, 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 take the state somewhere when the totality of the project that uh, uh, we're currently carrying out is? Uh, in uh, hundreds of billions of uh, uh, of uh, naira, so I think, uh, uh, Shil, let us start the discussion about how the state can be viable, how you can use uh, our uh, comparative advantages, you know, to competitive ones, how uh, we can create wealth, you know, across the length and breadth of uh, uh, this country. Uh, rather than saying, well, even in terms of uh, purchasing power parity, what, uh, what you're getting today, if you change it to uh, 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 US dollars, for instance, how much would that be? And some of the inputs into um, even ordinary road construction, you pay your uh, contractor, they buy asphalt, you know, uh, uh, from outside of this country is imported. What do you use to pay for it? So I think uh, 
uh, we should uh, mm. uh, get into discussion right around wealth creation for yeah, the yeah, states. Yeah. Governor uh, Martin, that is what I will. Yeah. If, we're, if, we're spend, if we're spending our time uh, talking about you know who's gotten what at uh, FAC and all of that, we are actually uh, distracting uh, uh, ourselves, and then uh, it's going to serve us uh, uh, no good. Yeah, I, I think I need to have some more time with you to discuss some of these concepts, the federating unit, the present-day Nigeria, and some of the realities. But time will not permit us on this very occasion. But uh, sorry, sir, you asked me. You asked me a question about the state police. I did not submit any memoranda uh, uh, on state police, but my position is very clear about state police. I didn't submit, not because of uh, arrogance, but I don't think uh, uh, the approach, the approach will, will quickly get us to where we want to go to. Uh, you're asking the state, you know, to submit memoranda, how state police will work. You know, I see it as, uh, 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 quite frankly, a waste of our time. I think the National Assembly, they know what to do. They have people uh, uh, that can quickly do this work. It is not the National Security Advisor. It is not uh, uh, National Economic Council that will deal with the issue of the state police. It's a constitutional thing. It should go to the National Assembly and then at the state level, we get uh, our state houses of assembly, you know, to pass this law. That is my but own But do you think that this. is the right way to go? State police, do you think it will work as a state governor spending the second term? Well, uh, uh, she, uh, when we started Amoteko in the southwest uh, uh, part of Nigeria, it was a compromise. We couldn't get state police. And we said, okay. And uh, we had uh, security issues uh, all over the place. So... We said, if we cannot get uh, state police at that particular time, let's get something that is close. And we got our attorney generals and our state houses of assembly within the southwest uh, 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 zone of the country to enact a law similar across the six states. And in your states, uh, I can tell you that we've employed more Amateco personnel, more than all the other states in the southwest put together. Uh, all, all the right. states that are operating uh, right. uh, uh, the Amateco uh, laws. Governor Sheyi Makine, uh, thank you so much indeed, and congratulations on some of the projects that you have uh, uh, flagged off today. And hoping that uh, when next I come to Ibadan, I won't hear anybody say to me, Chokpa or me, uh, then I'll be able to let you know that Chokpa or me syndrome is still there. But well, thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Governor Makine, for your stay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.